stakeholder, uh, SICOM stakeholders and participants, I guess all depending on where you're located in the world. On behalf of Judith and I, as well as uh, Madam Soller, who is having some technical difficulties to join this morning, welcome to this webinar on the strategic approach to international chemicals management. We are here today to start preparing for the fourth meeting of the intercessional process. I think as we can all appreciate, these are unprecedented times. The COVID-19 pandemic has had a profound impact on all of us, affecting every aspect of our lives. More than ever, it has brought home to us just how interconnected and interdependent we are, and that the state of our environment and the health of our populations, particularly the most vulnerable, are matters of concern for us all. Very relevant from a SICOM perspective, many links are also being made to how environmental risks, including pollution, may increase vulnerability or susceptibility to disease. I would therefore like to start by expressing my appreciation for your ongoing commitment to this important process and recommendations for a future global framework on chemicals and waste. As we come together to share ideas, develop texts, and sometimes debate approaches, we need to remind ourselves of our common objective, and that is the sound management of chemicals to protect human health and the environment. Nalini, could you Proceed to slide two, please. Thank you. So the pre following presentation will provide a bit of background on the intercessional process to date, outline the goals and expectations for IP4 coming next year in Bucharest, Romania in March, followed by ICCM5 in Germany in July, and highlight some key points of discussion. Next slide, please. <clears throat> the current intercessional process started in 2015. As you can see in these four bullets, there were a series of four meetings, and the most recent, where we had the privilege of, of meeting colleagues and, and exchanging with colleagues, was almost one year ago. Fourth intercessional process, which was initially scheduled for March 2021 in Romania, has been postponed by, sorry, initially scheduled for March 2020, has been postponed until March 2021. And ICCM5, uh, which was initially scheduled for October 2020, is now July 2021. Next slide, please. So the goals of the intercessional process. Um, the eventual goal of the intercessional process is to finalize recommendations for consideration by ICCM5. And as a minimum, there's three points on this slide that should be included in the recommendations. The first is clean text for a new voluntary multi-sector, multi-stakeholder instrument. Essentially, what we're looking at here is an updated overarching policy strategy. So the recommendations should aim to modernize the current OPS to reflect current global environment, as well as to address weaknesses in the current approach and build upon strength and lessons learned to date. Second element that you see on this slide is a path forward for implementing the new instrument. So obviously, it's great that we finalize text, but participants may also wish to discuss and propose supporting elements that are needed to facilitate implementation of the new instrument as part of the outcome of their deliberation, such as what are the rules of procedure? What do we want to do with existing policy, with emerging policy issues? The third element you see on this slide are elements of a high-level declaration. So essentially, we'd like to build off of the Dubai Declaration and possibly incorporate some aspects on improved governance. So Friends of the President Group is also being formed to discuss possible elements that might be included as a starting point for the eventual development of this high-level declaration. And you may have recently seen some 
a call for submission on that discussion. Next slide, please, Melina. So I'm not going to go into specific details <clears throat> of this slide, but as you can see, there's a number of links to documents and workshops that were undertaken in preparation for IT4 of March 2020. Uh, what we'd like to do is just to refresh your, your memories here with this slide by putting these up on the screen so you could appreciate some of the work that was done, as well as providing you with some of the links so you can go and consult some of these documents and refresh yourselves in advance of the uh, technical of the virtual working groups. Next slide, please, Nalini. So this slide really is about the plan forward. Following postponement of IP4, stakeholders expressed a strong desire to take advantage of the existing momentum and to use the additional time to continue making progress. I'm sure at this point you've all seen the co-chair's note that was circulated, and what it does is set out a plan forward to support continued progress through the online technical briefings and virtual working groups that Judith and I will introduce shortly. The online technical briefings will be facilitated by the Secretariat, sincere thanks to them. Information about the technical briefings is on the SICOM website, and we have co-facilitators who have volunteered their time to help co-facilitate these sessions. We recognize that working virtually is not ideal. Madam President, Judith, the Bureau, members, the Secretariat, and myself, we all recognize this. We recognize that this will present challenges for many stakeholders. Despite this, I think there's a collective feeling that is important to keep the momentum moving as best as possible and to make best use of this additional time we have to make further progress, advance our dialogue, and exchange ideas between us on some of the many important elements of SICOM. We believe that the proposed approach with regards to the virtual working groups balances the need to be equitable, inclusive, and transparent while taking the challenges of working virtually into consideration. Now, please note that this plan currently assumes regional meetings and that the IP4 will be able to take place in late winter, early spring of 2021. Next slide, please, Nalini. Thank you. The virtual working groups present an opportunity to enhance understanding and advance dialogue on a few specific, concrete, and more technical issues building off previous deliberations. They are definitely not intended to replace the formal face-to-face -face discussions at IP4 and or negotiations at ICCM5. We all value and cherish the importance and wealth of those in-person discussions. The virtual working groups, however, are open to all who wish to participate. We want to make sure that they are inclusive and people have that ability to participate. <coughs> With regards to responding to the need for equitable, transparent, and inclusiveness, and uh, that all-inclusive representation, work will be done by a variety of different modes. So we have obviously the virtual in-person webinar sessions that we are going to be hosting. And I say in-person, they're virtually in-person, uh, but we're also encouraging written input. The details of the modalities of this are available on the SICOM website. It's important that you take a look at the SICOM website surf around on that website and take a look at the different uh, documents as well as uh, information that's available. It's also important to note that co-facilitators for the virtual working groups uh, will have the opportunity to de determine the best mix of virtual sessions versus email sessions or to ensure that all stakeholders and all participants are able to equally participate. 
So suggestions for these modalities and the format really builds on a range of experience. <coughs> From a bureau perspective, we have met virtually a few times and the sessions have gone very well. The technical workshop, um, technical working group on targets and indicators also met virtually four times in delivering on its mandate for IP4. And I understand that those have been very productive sessions. UNEP has also convened a number of virtual meetings and we hope to learn from those experiences. So all this to say, that yes, there are probably challenges, but we also have a, a wealth of experience that we've acquired to date through the Secretariat to help guide us through these times. Nalini, can I ask you to go to the next slide, please? So the next slides speak to the actual virtual working groups. There will be four virtual working groups, one dedicated to each of the following topics. So the first topic, targets, indicators, and milestones. The second topic is governance mechanism to support implementation. The third topic is issues of concern. And finally, we have financial considerations, a very important topic. Mandates for each of the virtual working groups have been developed and are available on the SACOM website. Each virtual working group is going to have a designated web page where background material and outcome of the discussions are going to be available. In discussion with the Secretariat, with the President, as well as the Bureau, it was felt that it's important to make this information easily accessible in a single location where people could go to and find that information so that you are uh, easily able to participate in the sessions. So based on the IP4 meeting document, the objective of these sessions is to further develop and consult on the proposals and enhance our understanding of the issues. So if we call back our previous IP sessions, either Bangkok, the open-ended working group, incredible amounts of interest. Lots of dialogue, people want to express their views and opinions, and they want to have the opportunity to hear, to understand, and to ask questions uh, of our participants so we can further understand the full range of views. I think we also recognize that the issues and related recommendations covered by the intersessional process are all at different stages in their development. Some of the topics that we're going to be discussing have extensive review and negotiation at previous IP meetings and at the open-ended working group. So for example, vision, scope, and objectives. That's one example, topics that we've debated considerably in the past. For these issues, I think probably further progress is best made by in-person negotiations. We've done a sufficient amount of debate. Furthermore, Feedback from some stakeholders suggested that topics more related to a technical issue would be better suited for the virtual working groups. So what I'm saying by this is that I think we probably want to focus our effort in terms of the topic and the type of discussion that is that would be most productive to be held virtually. And this, our co-facilitators uh, will be in a best situation to identify and to work with you collectively to identify how we advance this. The next few slides introduce each of the virtual working groups. Nalini, if I could ask you to please proceed to the next slide, please, which is on targets, indicators, and milestones. Thank you. So collectively, on behalf of the SICOM community, we would like to thank Sylvia Kalnins from Latvia and from Sri Lanka for agreeing to continue to co-facilitate this discussion a sincere thanks. Are either Sylvia and Wahira actually there so participants could see their, uh, their face? Good morning, Sylvia. I, uh, I don't see your, your, uh, an image of your video feed, but... Uh, yeah. Yes, I'm not sure why why it's not showing, but uh, I'm here. <laughs> and 
I said good morning to you, Sylvia. Yes. Uh, Sylvia, that's a function of my time zone. I guess good afternoon to you. <laughs> so the virtual the virtual working group mandate is to build on the outcome of the technical working group discuss discussion that was established at IP3, and that is to refine targets, consider possible indicators, and to take a look at milestones. And with regards to technical uh, targets, indicators, and milestones. I think there's a collective recognition that different countries are at different stages with regards to their journey on the management of chemicals and waste. So accordingly, I think we all recognize that milestones will need to be tailored to specific circumstances. However, if, if we're able to identify some key milestones to which the global community should aspire, I think that would be great. But there is a recognition that uh, individual uh, or, or each country has its own set of considerations as well as uh, considerations for uh, various SICM stakeholders. So with regards to this, a technical working group was established at IP3 where we agreed to a number of guide parameters for the development of targets and moving forward and we want to build off of this work. Once again, thank you very much to Sylvia and Yahira. It was most appreciated. Thank you. It's our pleasure, David. Nalini, if I could ask. Oh, Yahira, you are there. Thank you very much. Glad you were able to, uh, to make hi, it. Hi, hi, David. I, I have been here since the beginning. So, okay, continue. <laughs> thank you very much. Yes. And I hope all is well with you. Thank you. Yes, fine. Thank you. Nalini, if I could ask you to proceed to slide number 10, governance and mechanisms to support implementation. So with regards to this virtual working group, sincere thanks also extended to Carissa Kovner from the USA. Carissa, are you there by any chance? Appreciate it as early. as well as to Tirup Wiri Wutikorn from Thailand. Tira, are you there? Yes, good. Uh, good day for all. And uh, because this too early in US, so Ms. Hoffman cannot participate in this session. She will do for the next session. So, hi everyone. Good afternoon, I guess, good evening almost in, in, in your- Yes, good evening, Island. yes. Good evening, glad you were able to, to virtually introduce yourself. Thank you very much. And I, I do appreciate that it is early in the morning uh, in Washington and I look forward to uh, engaging in the following session. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, bye-bye. So the mandate for the virtual working group on governance and mechanisms to support implementation is to build on progress made at IP3 and to make proposals that progress work on the following five topics leading up to IP4. So the first topic relates to broader cooperation and coordination, uh, be it at the regional, international, sectoral, and stakeholder levels. So really we're talking here about broad coordination. In addition to reviewing text, when talking about cooperation, I think we also want to consider some of the recommendations and dialogues that we previously had. For example, our colleagues from Africa region submitted a document on how to take further advantage of regional approaches. So once again, there's some documents that are available that could certainly help us as we move forward to refresh our thinking on this topic as it has been, uh, in many cases, several months. Nalini, if I could ask you to proceed to the next slide, please. <clears throat> the mandate of this virtual working group also includes consideration for the following four areas. So here we're talking about science policy interface, mechanisms for taking pro stock of progress, as well as mechanisms for updating the framework, 
and consideration and consider subsidiary bodies and ad hoc bodies, including the open-ended working group. So once again, uh, we want to take advantage of the work that was already done with regards to the science policy interface. Recall that UNEP was asked by UNEA to develop an options paper on the issue and was asked to make it available to the intersessional process for information to inform our deliberations. So once again, there's material here to consider the need for a science policy interface under SICOM, and particularly how it could address some of the challenges or issues that we're facing and would like to address, obviously without duplicating efforts in other fora. There are a number of other background documents for these discussions that were prepared for IP4, and a list of these can be found in the mandate documents posted on the SICOM website. We really encourage you to take a look at those documents. Nalini, if I could ask you to proceed to slide 12, please. So again, a sincere thanks to Sper Carr from Norway and Sam Adikumi from Canada. Uh, from Ghana, sorry, my apologies, it's very early here. Uh, Sver and Sam, would either of you be there, please? Okay, well, sincere thanks to both of you if you're uh, experiencing uh, some technical difficulties. At this, at this moment, your, uh, your commitment to this process is also sincerely appreciated. So the mandate of this group is to build on the compilation of recommendations. Specifically, as you see on the slide, it is to identify alternative text in areas of divergence on the topic, develop the proposals for the identification, nomination, selection, review, and prioritization of new issues of concern or interest, as well as to develop proposals on existing policy issues and other issues of concern. If I could ask you to proceed to the next slide, please, Nalini. I won't go in detail on this, but if you take a look at uh, the reference at the bottom of the page here, you're able to see that the following topics can serve as a starting point for discussion on this. Next slide, please, Nalini. So the next working group deals with financial considerations. And for this, we would like to thank Jonah Ormond from Antigua and Barbuda as well as Reggie Hermas from the Netherlands for accepting to co-facilitate this virtual working group on financial considerations. Jonah, Reggie, are either of you there, please? Good day, everyone. How are you doing? Very good. Thanks yourself and Jonah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jonah, and thank you, uh, for essentially your leadership in this area, as well as for helping out the community to advance this topic. Sincere thanks to you, and we look forward to con continued discussions in this area with you. Good morning, uh, David. Uh, I'm here as well, and good afternoon and good evening participants. So nice to be here and to listen how we will proceed our work with our financial working group. Thank you. Good afternoon, Reggie, and as well, a sincere thanks for your leadership in this area and uh, your, your time commitment to advance this topic. So the mandate of this virtual working group includes several components, including how best to achieve the integrated approach to financing through its main components of mainstreaming, private sector involvement, and external financing. The group will also look at UNEP's special program which you're all aware of, as well as dedicated resources. We recognize that dedicated resources have expanded through the Global Environment Facility, the GEF on Chemicals and Waste, uh, which now has a wider scope. So participants may wish to look at both the benefits 
and challenges for this fund to address the multi-sector nature of the town management of chemicals. Slide 15, please, Nalini. Third and fourth areas of this group hopes to cover this group hopes to cover include developing proposals on strategic partnerships within and across sectors, as well as financing the Secretariat to allow the Secretariat to undertake the functions we as stakeholders have requested of them. Finally, at the, set, the Secretariat, at the request of the third session of the open-ended working group, has prepared two documents for IP4 on cost recovery mechanisms and a resource mobilization strategy that you may wish to review. Slide 16, please, Nalini. So each of the virtual working groups has a big task ahead of them. And while this extended period prior to IP4 provides us with additional time to discuss these issues and appreciate the different perspectives, we recognize that there are many complex issues still to debate and in reality time is still quite limited we'd like to reiterate that the intention is not to replace face-to-face -face negotiations but rather but rather further and enhance the dialogue by taking advantage of this opportunity to further share views brainstorm and build understandings between delegates so that we are ready for upcoming negotiation Essentially, we are looking for genuine discussion. On behalf of the Secretariat, Judith, myself, uh, sincere thanks for your continued engagement. It is most appreciated, and we look forward to future dialogue in the months to come. I'd like to, at this point, turn over to my co-chair, Judith, who also has some points that she would like to address. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, I'm thankful for the interest and dedication uh, you're giving to this process. As we are adapting our work, we have this opportunity of virtual working groups to keep moving towards the best recommendations we can have to the ICCM5. Um, taking into account not only our national circumstances, but also the regional and the global situation uh, in these uh, virtual working groups. Uh, I'm thankful for the dedication of the co-facilitators that decided to take uh, their, their leadership uh, in these uh, working groups. Uh, I'm also uh, like uh, to uh, thank uh, focal points and uh, members of the Bureau uh, who are very important and essential in the communication among regions. Uh, we hope that these uh, virtual working groups could uh, give us uh, an excellent tool for better understanding of the process and of the compromise we need in it. Thank you very much. Um, and then perhaps before we turn to the questions and answers, uh, we now have um, the ICCM5 president, Ms. Gertrude Sala, present with us. Um, so I'll turn uh, the mic now to Gertrude. Thank you. Yes, uh, good afternoon, good morning. Good evening, uh, dear SICOM stakeholders. I apologize that uh, I couldn't uh, follow the discussion uh, from the beginning uh, because uh, we have now a briefing, but I had technical problems to connect to, to this webinar. And um, yes, um, that happens uh, in a country like Germany. 
So, <laughs> I believe that uh, that it is uh, a problem with the um, internet uh, connection we had. So, nevertheless, a warm welcome also from my side uh, to all participants in this uh, webinar. And I hope everybody is well in these uh, unprecedented times due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This pandemic, dear colleagues, is a challenge in many ways, and it ruined our roadmap to ICCM5. You all know that we have to postpone IFP4 and ICCM5, but it was not an option for the co-chairs, the Bureau and myself to interrupt the intersectional process. Therefore, the Bureau decided to set up a virtual process in order to keep momentum and to use an important opportunity to forward the intersectional process as far as possible. Today, we were we did our virtual work. And as you already have seen in the PowerPoint presentation of our co chairs, this work includes four virtual working groups and several technical briefings. The task of the virtual working group is to, re <coughs> to prepare recommendations on the strategic approach and the sound management of chemicals and waste beyond 2020 for consideration and negotiation at IP4 and ICCM5. The basis for this work is the compilation of recommendation uh, document, which is the outcome of IP3 in Bangkok last September. I would like to underline two important issues. And I repeat something that you have heard in the PowerPoint presentation from David Mora and so in the, in the other events in the past. The work of these virtual working groups will not replace negotiations at IP4 and ICCM5. But nevertheless, it is important work in preparation of following negotiations at IP4 and ICCM5. And everybody is invited to participate in webinars or through online submissions. The idea is to shape working as transparent and inclusive as possible. That means we try to make the best in the current situation, and I would like to promote this approach. I would also like to stress that we need the sound management of chemicals to reach especially SDG3 and to overcome the COVID-19 pandemic. This should also be strong motivation to forward the intersessional process with the aim to adopt an ambitious and new, new framework for the sound management of chemicals and waste beyond 2020. During this intersessional process, I spoke very often about the need of more political attention and commitment for the chemicals and waste cluster. To reach this is the main reason why I proposed ICCM5 president, the preparation of a high-level declaration based on the model of the Dubai Declaration. I am really convinced that a high-level declaration in this regard could pave the way on national and international levels to more political commitment. The process of drafting elements of a high-level declaration will not replace negotiation and it must be transparent and inclusive. Therefore, I ask all stakeholders for input on a possible high-level declaration. This input will be considered and structured by an informal group for compiling elements of a high-level declaration, which will be negotiated at r 4 and ICCM5. Three representatives of each region, sector, and stakeholder group are members of this informal group, which will be co-facilitated by Kay Williams from United Kingdom and Angela Rivera from Colombia. The declaration should contain two important elements. The declaration should first adopt 
the new framework of the Python processor. The second element should be a high-level commitment for the relevance of a sound management of chemicals and ways to fulfill the SDG. Yes, I can stakeholder. I hope that as many stakeholders as possible will participate in our virtual work. I'm sure it's worth travel. Finally, I would like to thank our co-chairs of the intersessional process, all co-facilitators of the virtual working group and the informal group of compiling elements of a high-level declaration, and the members of the ICCM Science Bureau for their ongoing engagement. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Ms. Salah. Um, we had a little bit of problem hearing you, so perhaps for the next session, we'll just make sure that your audio is uh, is clear. Um, if I could now invite uh, colleagues um, to ask any questions, uh, please use the Q&A uh, box. Um, and if you feel you can put your hand up as well, uh, and we can give you the floor and unmute you. So we haven't received any questions yet. So um, it could be that uh, the presentation was crystal clear. Um, so, colleagues, if I could ask you to use the Q&A for your questions. I've seen a couple of questions in the chat box, which I'll uh, read out. But if you can please use the Q&A, it'll be easier to manage uh, in that sense. So, we have a question um, about whether the virtual working groups are open to all, how to sign up for uh, participating in them. Um, Judith or David, would you like to take this question whilst we wait for others? Nalini, can you hear me and see me, please? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. I was struggling with my mute button here as well as the video button. Uh, thank you very much for that question. Very important question. Uh, the virtual working groups are certainly open to all who wish to participate. There is a, a registration process uh, so that people can register for the virtual working groups and the information for that is on the, the SciChem website. Uh, we encourage you to uh, just register and uh, that just allows us to get a sense of who will be participating and who has interest in the virtual working groups. So yes, please um, sign up, register for the working groups, participate. We also encourage uh, perhaps uh, as appropriate uh, any uh, re any dialogue with your um, partners in advance of these sessions, uh, perhaps to share ideas, to get the thoughts flowing. But yes, indeed, they are open to all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I got a, a question from Jill saying that the Q&A doesn't seem to be working. So uh, perhaps then we can just use the chat function to uh, to ask the questions. Um, just for your information, so far in terms of registrations, we've received for the targets, indicators, and milestones virtual working group just over 140 registrations for governance and mechanisms to support implementation, um, 133 registrations for issues of concern virtual working group, 135 registrations. And for the virtual working group on financial considerations, just over 100 uh, registrations. So we have a lot of interest. Um, uh, we did send out a communication to all like, um, focal points uh, just yesterday uh, with an update uh, providing the links to the registration 
We are going to close the registration as of today. However, please note that it will be open up till the 31st of October so that we can have any late registrations as they come in. And the reason we are just going to close it at least for um, the end of today is so that we can then communicate on some of the upcoming events that will take place, um, especially for the virtual working groups uh, that are undertaking some electronic consultations, as well as the first uh, welcome uh, briefing for the virtual working group on governance and need mechanisms to support implementation that will take place next Tuesday, the 27th of October. Um, okay, so now we have some questions on Q&A, okay. Lenny, can I talk a little bit? Uh... Um, Wahira? Yes, I, I, I like to announce that uh, uh, the target indicators and uh, milestone group, uh, Sylvia, me, and uh, Brenda, we are having a perfect coordination and cooperation. So we are uh, effectively moving forward. And we have our own meetings, uh, virtual meetings. So our group is uh, doing pretty well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ohira, for that, that update. And uh, sincere thanks to, to yourself, Sylvia, and Brenda for uh, coordinating and, and uh, getting everything ready for your first session. That is wonderful. Uh, Nalini, I just note here that there's a question. I'm just scanning the, um, the, the Q&A box. And I note there's a, a question here, I think a very relevant question about, and I'll, I'll just read it out. How will the written comments and suggestions be incorporated and how will opposing issues or concerns be dealt with? That's a very, very relevant question. I think as we indicated that, that you know, the virtual working groups are not negotiation sessions. Um, you know, what we are looking for is we're looking for ideas to be brought out, views to be expressed. And what we're asking of the co-facilitators of these sessions is we're asking for them to um, essentially try to facilitate a, an understanding of what the issues are. And so while there may be initially, uh, you know, five or six ideas put on the table, they may be able to narrow it down to two or three ideas or views or, 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 or perspectives on a topic. I think what's important is, is to uh, recognize in a summary document or report for the virtual working group to be able to say that the range of views that were expressed are these and uh, you know there's some ability to explain uh, those different views so to make sure that the views are expressed and uh, and, and to be able to to, to to explain some of the context around those views and not to choose text, one piece of text or one idea over another. Um, so that is that is ultimately the, the intention. And I think we'll have to adapt as we progress throughout this session. But it uh, what we want to do is to have a dialogue, have a discussion on this. Uh, we want to respect and appreciate the different views that are put forward. And as such, make sure they are documented. And as we proceed with IP4, we would then go in with that. As, uh, as a consideration for moving forward with discussions at IP4. So thank you very much for that question. Um, David, we have a question about um, the difference between the virtual working groups and the number of sessions the virtual working groups will have. There are some that will only have two or three um, virtual online meetings. Um, there are some that will have uh, a, a few more. So the question is, oh, and related to that, is that was this done depending on how much work that needs to be considered, or will additional elements be added as we go along? So very good question. Uh, so we've asked the co-facilitators to take a look at the topics that have to be covered and take a look at what the best approach is based on their initial thinking. 
uh, you know, should we have a certain number of virtual sessions? Perhaps we could start with an email exchange first. Um, you know, in some areas, there's several topics to discuss. And it may be best to start virtually with a certain number of them and then have email follow up on some of them uh, just to get the ball rolling. Ideas can be compiled, documents can be recirculated out. So there is no magical answer in terms of how that should be done. What we want to do is provide the co facilitators with the maximum flexibility uh, in terms of advancing this. And obviously, I think that uh, as, as it evolves, and as we, we learn from uh, our successes, um, you know, I, I, I feel that we will probably be co-facilitators to adjust and adapt. Um, there's a question on about the dates for the future meetings and how many meetings will be conducted. Um, I welcome participants to go onto the SICOM website and click on the button on the virtual working groups and all the information for each of the virtual working groups is made available there. Um, I can, if if one if needed, I can just quickly share my screen so um, then I can make it show the participants how and where to look for the information. If you think that would be useful, David. Um, but I there think is that also, would be wonderful. Okay, um, there is also one question, perhaps for Ms. Salah, is about uh, on for the friends of the presidency on the declaration. Uh, is it open to NGO participation? So perhaps whilst uh, that's being responded to, I will then share my screen. Yes, of course, it is uh, open to all. Because. Uh, we we sent out a call at the beginning of October holders to uh, uh, yes uh, to contribute to a to a possible high level um, declaration with uh, uh, some proposals for elements of such a declaration. Uh, that means um, um, that uh, everybody uh, is included in this uh, process. We want to be included, and that uh, the uh, informal group will consider all uh, the input we got and will uh, structure it and uh, draft uh, elements for high level declaration on this basis. Thank you. Okay, I will now share my screen. Um, so, from the home, from SICAM.org, we have now a new um, area for the intercessional process, um, including the high-level declaration informal drafting group, virtual working groups, and the technical briefings. Um, if I move to the virtual working groups and click on that tab, and you scroll down for each of the virtual working groups, we have information on the virtual working group, including its proposed calendar, um, the path forward. This is the co-chairs uh, scenario note um, that has been circulated. And there's also a kind of mapping of all of the virtual working group schedule. So you can see in terms of the, big, uh, the bigger picture. Under the pre-session documents, we have all the background documents that have been um, included in the mandates documents. So it's a one-stop shop to get this information. And as we go along, we will have all the information, including the list of participants for each of the virtual working groups. Um, in there's a question around the registration. So um, the registration has to be done through, um, uh, it was sent around by email to the national focal points. Um, so uh, we hope that this information has reached you. If not, please do send us an email and we will then circulate the link for registration. Thank you.
So we would welcome any more comments, uh, questions. Uh, hi, Nalini. Uh, now, uh, both Silva and me have participated this session. Uh, should we participate the next session that you will have in a couple of hours' time? You will have the same session in two hours, right? So we don't need to participate. So we have already participated. Uh, um, so it would be nice for Hira if uh, one of you could participate, perhaps, so that then oh, okay. uh, put a, a face to your name. But um, we, of course, recognize it's going to be very late for you. No, no, it's okay. I can participate here. Uh, it's no problem. I will. So, thank you, Nalini. I will certainly participate. It is uh, not too late for me. <laughs> okay, thank you. So it looks like um, we don't have any additional questions. Um, if uh, the colleagues would like, if you would like to speak, and maybe if you'd like to raise your hands, um, if you have any burning questions. Thank you, uh, I think it's also important to recognize that um, we are starting uh, this up again after a, a, a significant time break because of the current uh, pandemic. So I do appreciate that uh, some participants are probably reflecting on what they've heard. Participants are, um, you know, probably going to follow up in terms of looking at the website after you've walked us through. They've seen the links now. We encourage participants to take a look at the schedules for the, uh, the virtual working groups, the documents that are available. And, uh, you know, as always, we remain open to answer other questions that you may have in the future. So uh, we appreciate that, uh, you know, some of this will, 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 as we look through it, as you work through the documents and deliberate on the topics, you may very well have some questions and we remain open to answer those questions, obviously at a, at a later point in time. We have a question from um, around the participation in the virtual working groups. Um, the question is that can all members of the uh, virtual working group speak or will there be an appointed focal point? So, thank you very much. I think that is a, uh, an excellent question. Uh, there are not going to be appointed focal points. Um, I think as part of the, the virtual working groups, people uh, have that opportunity to speak, to participate to submit uh, email notifications with the information. Obviously, uh, though, if people want to uh, prepare in advance and exchange ideas, and if you feel that, that you know the best way is to reflect your opinion through one particular focal point, uh, you know there's there's a, a range of ways that this could be done. But you know we we were the, the virtual working groups that truly are open for participation. I think we, we may have to adjust all depending on how they proceed. And that is why the co-facilitators uh, have been provided with the maximum uh, amount of flexibility in terms of, of proceeding just based on what works best for their particular sessions as well as the topics being discussed. So thank you very much for that question. So um, we have Jill Hanna who would like to take the floor. Um, Juan Manuel, could you please unmute Jill Hanna? Just a minute, please. Now you have the floor. Could you repeat the name just to make sure that I haven't mistaken? Jill Hanna. And what's the family name, please? Hanna, H-A-N-N-A-H. -N -N -A ah, okay, sorry. Thank 
Thank, thank you very much. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening. Um, I, I am here representing the Global Alliance on Health and Pollution, and it is very nice to see so many old friends from my previous life on this call. Um, I'm I wanted to ask, and my question seemed to disappear in the Q&A, um, whether it, I was very encouraged that David and Judith said that we should um, try and do work in advance of the working of the virtual working groups with our uh, colleagues, uh, so that we, you know, we save time during the actual working group meeting. Um, on this call, at least for me, and I'm not a good computer person, I'm not very technically skilled, uh, I can only see the names of the participants of people who are either facilitators or bureau members or SICAM secretariat people. Will it be possible to have a list of the people who in, who are registered for each working group and some kind of email address with their permission, of course, so that we can, in fact, liaise with each other. That was my question. Thank you so much for your time. Um, so we will be putting up the list of participants on the website under each of the virtual working groups. I recognize with uh, this um, platform WebEx that if you are an attendee, you can't actually see the list of all the participants. So um, we will see if that's something that it just is a, it's a system uh, issue and can be resolved. Uh, but nevertheless, we will share with you the list of participants. It will be available on the website as well. Um. David, Judith, I don't see any more questions at the moment. David, can you hear me? Yes, Nalini. I, I okay. apologize. The, the sound broke up for a minute there. Okay. Did you ask a question or something? I, I heard you say something, but I, I apologies. It, it just broke up for about 20 seconds. Yeah. Okay, no. Um, we've actually got two questions from Suki Kuroda. So, Juan Manuel, could you please unmute Mr. Kuroda? Mr. Corrada, you have the floor now. Hi, hello. Ah, Ms. Corrada. Sorry. sorry, I thought I canceled the uh, the message, but uh, yeah, I'll, I will go ahead. Um, so, hi, hi, the colleagues. Um, I'm participating from Japan, and I wonder if the consideration to the time difference be given to the participants from Asian countries, because um, most of the virtual working group is starting from 10 p.m. for us. So wonder if some of the virtual working group will be um, arranged in a different time frame. And the second question was, um, you had mentioned that the, uh, the list of the participants will be online. So all the individual name and where they belong, be available online. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, Suki, for the, the 
question about timing of the virtual working groups. Um, it is uh, an important comment for consideration, and uh, you know we do want to uh, facilitate participation by all. So what we uh, will definitely do, and um, just looking to the SiteCom Secretariat, that may be a consideration uh, that is uh, extended to the co-facilitators of the virtual working group to try to vary the uh, the start times of the sessions, uh, recognizing that uh, you know it may be early or late sessions, not just for a certain time zone all the time, uh, but uh, you know the, those uh, those conveniences or inconveniences are uh, are hopefully uh, spread out amongst uh, second participants. So thank you. Very good. And, and perhaps for the second question, um, uh, what we'll do for each of the virtual working groups is we will clear um, upload of the list of participants uh, by all of the registered participants. Um, we won't include email addresses. However, when we do communicate with the registered participants for each of the virtual working groups, we can share the email list between you. So what we'll do is we will um, send out a message and, and ask, uh, if if that's okay for everybody, but we can have definitely be the names and affiliation um, included in the list of participants tab. Nalini, I think uh, Abbas Torabi is raising hand currently. Yes, please, Manuel, if you can give the floor. Sure, just a second, please. You have the floor now, Mr. Torabi. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Good time and uh, good day, good day, good evening, and good morning to everybody. Uh, thank you, David, for the presentation. I have a question regarding your presentation. Uh, you said uh, that uh, one of the objectives of this uh, international process is to develop uh, the UTEC for IT4 or IT5. Uh, I want to know uh, would it affect uh, the role of Mr. Tarabi, I apologize to interrupt you, but we can't hear you very clearly. You keep dropping off. Um, I don't know if you can come a bit closer to your microphone, perhaps. Hello. Can you hear me now? A little bit better, Mr. Tarabi. So maybe if you can speak a bit slower, so then we can capture your question. Uh, indeed, I sent my question in the question answer box, and you can uh, see here. If it is possible, you can see too. I don't. I think uh, the quality of my voice is not too good because of internet connection. Okay, for some reason we can't see it in the Q and A. So maybe if you could just repost it. Then we'll just see it at the bottom and, and we'll be able to respond to it, please. So I will send it right now. Thank you. I will send it again. Hello? Yes. So I'm reading your question right now. Allow me to read it, please. Um, it was mentioned that in IP process, one objective is to prepare clean text for IP4 and ICCM. Does this online way of proceeding um, affect the role of in-person meeting or possibly diminish it? 
So that is a very, very good question or point of clarification. So the role of the virtual working groups is to not, the, 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 if we can prepare clean talks and everyone unanimously agrees on a point, that is wonderful. Uh, but the purpose of these sessions is not to develop clean text. Uh, it's to advance the discussion as much as we can. We recognize that these are not negotiation sessions uh, and they're not uh, part of the, the, those uh, formal discussion sessions where we are going to, uh, to develop clean text. So the purpose is to exchange ideas, to advance the text as much as possible. At the end of the day, we're going to have a document that outlines uh, the topic, the different points of views that were raised on the topic. Obviously, it will be a, a summary of that. Uh, those will be available to participants to make sure that their, their views have been properly expressed and relayed in those documents. And then when we have an in-person IP4, as well as we proceed with ICCM5, what we're going to do at IP4 is use these documents as a starting point. We will start off IP4 and we will say, recall during the virtual working groups, these were some of the discussions, the ideas that were raised. Uh, we now wrote it down to these three views. Um, how can we further advance this? So that is the purpose of these virtual sessions is recognizing that in many topics and for many topics i should say we have additional work that is required to further flesh out and understand the perspectives and the views of different participants so we want to elaborate on those uh, make sure we have a document that summarizes those and then we'll be able to proceed so in response to your question no the um essentially the the these virtual working groups are not at all intended to diminish the role of IP4 or ICCM and the importance of in-person face-to-face meetings. So thank you for raising that question. It's very important. Um, David, we have two more uh, well, questions, maybe a comment and a question. Uh, so the comment uh, is about to ensure good communication. It's important that the uh, registered participants of the virtual working groups receive direct communication from the co-facilitators and the secretariat of the virtual working group. So I think that that's clear. And, um, you know, normally when we do send out information, it goes through SICOM focal points. However, for this, the registered participants will receive direct communication. Um, and the question uh, we have is that, will the normal rules and procedures apply? And perhaps we might need a bit more clarification in what context. Um, and if we can get that uh, clarified and we can then respond to it clearly. So, Mr. Yaya, would you like to take the floor to um, ask your question? Juan Manuel, could you just unmute Mr. Yaya Masangi, please? Yes, he is already unmuted. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, very faintly. Maybe you can come a bit closer to your microphone. my headphones.
Okay, one minute will be lost, uh, Mr. Masagi. Is he still unmuted? I think he's replacing uh, the microphone. Uh, he's he's uh, plugging a headset for the moment. And then uh, he will have maybe to go to the menu, audio and video, and do speaker and microphone settings. He's currently unmuted. Okay, it seems that um, he's having trouble to connect. Um, we don't have any more questions or any hands up asking for the floor. So, um, would you like to just say maybe some concluding remarks, Ms. Stella, um and David and Judith, and we can then close the session? Uh, we, we, I will let yeah. Ma, Ma, Madame Saller go first, please. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you very much, Nalini. Uh, and again, thank you very much to the co-chairs for, for uh, this um, uh, for that presentation. Um, yes, um, my, my impression of this first virtual um, technical briefing is that it is still challenging to use these um, uh, facilities um, like uh, WebEx and, and other uh, um, things. But uh, the, uh, the, the big interest we found for this um, first uh, technical briefing uh, encourage it is encouraging that uh, that we are uh, using the right way. To momentum for on the way to ICCM5 and I, I'm sure that it will help uh, to reach a successful outcome next year in Bonn. Thank you for all your participation and uh, your ongoing engagement. Over to you, David. Thank you very much, Nalini. I think um, first, sincere thanks, uh, Nalini, to uh, the SICOM Secretariat for all of the work that you have uh, done to get us to this point. Sincere thanks to uh, the Bureau uh, for the deliberations we've also had in terms of the best ways to proceed. Uh, Madam President, as well as uh, Judith Torres, my, my co-chair, sincere thanks also. We have done, uh, you know, the dialogue that we've had to get us to this point is uh, is excellent. Um, colleagues, SICOM participants, uh, we recognize that this is very much an unprecedented time. I think uh, we have, as uh, would like to follow up and um, proceed on the recommendations of many of you that really we have to continue to advance discussions, we have to continue to advance our work in this area, look forward to your engagement over the coming months, and I definitely look forward to the dialogue around such very important topics. Sincere thanks to SICOM uh, participants, you are the ones who make this the success that it is, and um, I look forward to your continued engagement. So thank you very much. Thank you, David. Um, Judith. Well, uh, thank you very much for participating in the first session. Uh, I haven't seen the complete list of uh, participants, but I think that it is still very early in the morning for Zulak people to attend. I hope they can engage later in, in the next session. So thank you for your engagement and we'll be uh, seeing all the details that everybody could be uh, 
to participate in uh, usually in this type of uh, virtual working groups. I know that uh, not everybody has Wi-Fi access. Um, also, uh, these, all these virtual groups are in English, but I think that we are making an effort to continue uh, working and keep the momentum uh, to keep on going on our best work members. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much. Um, I think in terms of participation, we had uh, at the top of the list of almost 130 participants. So, um, you know, it obviously it's a very interesting topic. It's very um, uh, co participants and colleagues and delegations would like to know how uh, the intersessional process uh, will be run um, in this virtual uh, way. And so we thank you very much for taking the time uh, today to, to be available. Um, if there are any other questions, please feel free to contact the Secretariat and we can try and respond um, uh, as, as best we can. Um, and then those who will be joining us this afternoon, we look forward to uh, seeing you in the next few hours. Bye-bye.